right. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Play at Osmoa on Instagram Live. I'm Teacher Holly, and we're going to be reading a really awesome story today. It's called Jill and Dragon by Leslie Barnes. Um, I think this is a, a really fun story, and I actually had some help from uh, my colleagues, my friends at Osmoa, Teacher Barbara, and Teacher Eugenia making this selection. So, um, hi, Teacher Barbara. Hi, Teacher Eugenia, if you're joining us today. Um, if not, I hope you're tuning in later. Um, and uh, yeah, we might have a surprise teacher today, Teacher Percy. He's my little tuxedo cat. Um, this, I'm, I happen to be sitting in Percy's favorite chair right now that has become my reading chair um, for Play at Osmoa. Um, so I hope everybody has had a um, really nice weekend. I hope you're all well. Um, to get us started today, we're gonna do what we did last week and we're gonna start with some simple breathing, okay? Actually, get a little bit more light in here. All right, okay, so on the count of three, we're gonna take a deep breath in and this breath is going to be for you or me. This is a breath that is for us, okay? On the count of three. And then let it out. That felt good, huh? Shoulders might feel a little bit loose. My jaw definitely feels a little bit more relaxed. Okay, on the count of three, we're gonna take another deep breath, and this breath is going to be for our family and for our friends, okay? One, two, three. last breath this is a breath that um, this is a breath for our community okay so one two three <sighs> great job everybody excellent and I'm hoping everybody feels a little bit more loose a little bit more relaxed um, and of course if you still uh, feel a little bit squirmy um, one of my favorite things I like to do is start out with a little shake. Um, so you politely, you know, just shake your hands. You kind of build up till you're going really, really fast. And that kind of helps get out the squirmy wormies, at least for me. Um, let's see. What's, has everybody been making, I hope everybody's been making um, art this week or finding another creative outlet like dancing or even writing, maybe even reading. Um, uh, my plan is to have a reading list available of all the books we have read at Play at Ismola Live um, in the next couple days. So um, for our readers who are at home, um, I think some of these are books that you can check out uh, through your library, the library, <laughs> library, your library digitally, of course, um, and uh, or you might even have them at home. Um, I'm often surprised how often um, uh, young friends have a lot of the same books that I do, which is really cool. Um, oh, and don't forget today we are going to be doing an art project together. And um, actually, I forgot one thing. You might need a ruler for our art activity, or at least just something that's a flat edge like a book. Um, so something that you can make a line on, but, and even if you don't have that, just make a line, you know, it's really easy to do that. Just go, zoop. but we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, so now we've had a deep breath. We've chatted a little bit. Are we ready for a story? Okay. So today's story is Jill and Dragon by Leslie Barnes. Once upon a time, there lived a terrible dragon. Oh my goodness. Oh, that was a teaser. It's like a trailer for a movie. Okay. <laughs> Did I start it at the wrong end? Oh no, I didn't. Okay, okay, we got it, we got it. Okay. Happily ever after, said the last page in Jill's huge book. But Jill noticed that not everyone at the end of the story looked so happy. Oh, what's going on over here, friends? We've got our, we've got a, looks like a dragon, right? How do we know it's a dragon? 
It has scales. Um, it's very large. I always see very large dragons, but there can be small ones too. Um, oh, he's got claws over here, a long tail, a very long neck. And what's going on with the dragon? Looks like there's some people here that have, have the dragon tied up. Oh dear. It's not very nice. We're, why are you sad, dragon? asked Jill. The king hates me, said Dragon, his pathetic eyes looking up at her from the page. All I can do is burn, scorch, singe, char, and barbecue everything in the kingdom. Don't worry, Dragon, you can come and live with me, exclaimed Jill. Oh, so, yeah, forgot to ask about the dragon's expression. He didn't look very happy, did he? Well, how does he look here? It looks like he's smiling a bit to me, maybe because he's made a new friend in our friend Jill here. And Jill already has another friend too. What's this? A dog? And you can actually see here on his name tag, dog. So, Actually, fun trivia fact, um, dog was Teacher Holly's first word. Uh -huh. I'm going to teach you how to do all my favorite things, said Jill to Dragon. <gasps> what are some of Jill's favorite things? We look closely. She's got a big book, so maybe she likes to read. I see um, musical notation, so those are music notes, what we read when we make music. And it looks like there's pictures and all sorts of things, huh? That's nice. Isn't it nice when you can share a fun hobby or interest with a new friend? I always like that part of making new friends. <gasps> Jill taught Dragon all about flower arranging. Wow, look at that. Though it looks like Dragon might have been a little enthusiastic. It looks like uh, Dragon was trying to balance the flowers on their head and it kind of ended with a huge mess. Oh dear. Jill taught Dragon about fashion. Yes, look at that. What a very fashionable Dragon. They've got a sweater and a wonderful handbag. Um, oh, what else? There's boots, there's sunglasses. Love it. Wish I had some of those things. <laughs> Jill taught Dragon how to play the trumpet. Oh, that's really cool. How do you play a trumpet? Can we imagine what kind of music comes out of the trumpet? Sometimes it's very high notes, usually a lot of high notes. <laughs> oh, dog seems to be enjoying himself. And finally, Jill taught Dragon how to host a tea party. Wow. Anybody throwing some tea parties lately? Or plan to after, um, after uh, we can all go out and see one another again? Looks like a fun tea party. Look, there's tea and cupcakes and even a cake. Dragon looks sadder than ever. I don't belong anywhere. All I do is burn with my fiery breath, he said. Something at the tea table had caught Jill's eye, and she exclaimed, I have an idea, Dragon. <gasps> oh, man, what do, you think, what do you think Jill's idea was? If we look at the table, do we have any hints? We see that there's teacups and there's cakes and pictures hanging in the background, and even the table they all look a little charred, like Dragon said, right? But what's Jill holding in her hand? Right over here, what does it look like? Hmm. Maybe we'll find out on the next page, right? <gasps> the next morning, armed with a fork, Jill jumped onto Dragon's back and they flew into the huge book. Ooh, wow. Did you guys know they were in a book club the whole time? I didn't know that. Ooh. It's almost like uh, going to Hogwarts. You can go into books and go into a whole new uh, story. Oh, we're just like we did too, right? We're, like, we're reading a book and going into a book. How meta. <laughs> Angry knights greeted Jill and Dragon on the page. Jill, feeling brave, jumped off Dragon and shouted, Take us to the king! Oh, it's getting serious, everybody. Bless you, Bobby. <gasps> oh, wow. Look at that. It got serious real quick, everybody. What's Dragon doing? Blowing flames everywhere. Oh my goodness. Oh, it looks like there's another page here. Oh my, oh my, my. 
Can everybody see? Wow. That's, that's a lot of fire. That, I mean, that's Olympic style fire breathing right there. Wow. Okay, what's it say? Jill pulled a piece of bread out of her pocket, put it on the end of her fork, and held it above her head. Carefully, Dragon began to char the bread, creating a striking, if rather flattering, portrait of His Majesty. Whoa, look at that! Looks like Dragon used their talents in a really creative way. The knights pass the toast portrait of the king. Oh, look at that. I've never seen a, a, a portrait of a king on toast, or let alone a portrait of anybody on toast, really. The king took the toast from the knights. He nibbled a corner, then a second corner, and then a third. After a long pause, his face lit up, and with a huge grin, he proclaimed, this toast is truly fit for a king. But wait, Dragon was not finished yet. Jill pulled out more slices of bread and Dragon created even more intricate and wonderful designs. As Dragon toasted bread, day turned into night. The fire from Dragon's breath sent colorful sparks into the air, which lit up the sky like fireworks. The king bowed before Dragon and said, Dragon, you belong here. Come and live in my castle and make me toast. Okay, wow. And look at that, all those fireworks up in the sky. Wow, that's very really cool. Dragon made toast portraits for everyone and they all lived happily ever after. Feasting on toast. The end. We all have a happy ending now, said Jill to her dog, as they read the last page in her book once more. Oh, wow. Ah, look at that. Look at all the amazing artwork that Dragon made on toast. And look, he even made one of Jill at the very end. And somebody seems to be enjoying that, uh, that toast. You see there's a little birdie with some toast in their mouth. Awesome, everybody. So, um, all right. So what did, what, did, what did we learn about dragon today? So we, well, for me, um, you know, I think one of the reasons I was drawn to this book a few years ago, um, I picked it up while I was traveling, um, was, uh, it was about dragons and, and dragons are cool. But, um, you know, it's also about somebody who's trying to figure out what their talent is. And at first, Dragon seems kind of all over the place. Um, he's, you know, it's like he's trying to, you know, he's trying to, you know, he, he doesn't mean to char and barbecue and burn things. He's a dragon, right? Can't help it. That's what dragons do. Um, at least some dragons that I've been told. Um, but in the end, Dragon has a friend. Um, who helps him discover what his creative superpower is, which happens to be making portraits on toast. And it's very yummy. Um, and at the end of the day, got a really cool job out of it. <laughs> um, so I guess, you know, some, it, it seems for a little while there that, you know, Dragon was kind of, you know, very down on themselves, um, not feeling like they belonged anywhere. Um, and I, sometimes I think we all can feel that way. Um, but, you know, it only takes one person um, really to, to, you know, see us for who we are um, and help us grow, which is what I think Jill and Dog actually did for Dragon. So Dragon was lucky because he had two people who, um, you know, believed in what they could do. So, yeah, just remember, if you're ever feeling a little down or, you know, you're just like, hey, you know, struggling with your own, um, create, uh, your own creative process, um, that, you know, Dragon found a way through and you can too, right? Um, so today for this art activity, um, if I had thought about it earlier, I could have been like, yeah, we're gonna make toast portraits. Um, but you know, not everybody likes toast. Um, not everybody can eat toast. Um, and some of us might not have the things to make toast right now. 
um, and that's a-okay. Um, and I've been thinking a lot about different art materials that we have around the house um, that we could use to make our artwork, especially if we're, you know, I was looking for some crowns today and realized, oh, I don't have any. Um, but I think I'm gonna make a little list of alternative art materials that are at home that you can use. And if you're an adult who's joining us today, um, you know where these things are. Um, if, you are a, uh, if you are a young learner today, just make sure to check in with your, um, your adult that it's okay to use those things, okay? Um, so you know what, friends? Um, we're not gonna make portraits on toast today, maybe another day. <laughs> um, but one of the things that I, I loved about this story um, is this, the way that um, Jill's book tells the story of Dragon. Um, and we can see here that there's a line and everything is very, uh, this, this story of these knights and their toasts, it's told in a single line. Um, and uh, there are many different um, artists from all over the world and every place and time who kind of use this line to tell a story. Um, and um, I don't know why they do that. I'm trying to think way, way back to when I was in school um, about linear or line narratives. Um, and a long time ago, Teacher Holly was a medievalist, which meant that I studied medieval languages, which is stories from, um, uh, uh, stories that were particularly from what we now today called, uh, call England or the United Kingdom, um, even parts of Germany. I know it was a very different career path for Teacher Holly. Aren't you glad we're here today? <laughs> um, and um, one of the things is that um, you see a lot of in medieval times are these stories that are told in a very linear way. And there is a beginning and a middle and an end, just like in so many stories that we have today. Um, and I thought it could be fun if we maybe made a, a, line, a linear narrative or a timeline about a story that happened to us today because every day is a new day to tell a story. Um, and also, I will post this a little bit later, but I was thinking about this this morning. Um, at Asmoa right now for Stardust, which will be up through August now, um, there is a timeline. Um, there's a timeline that runs throughout the gallery and it highlights different, um, different times of creativity all the way from the Big Bang, and that's when the universe was created and all the elements that make up our creativity were born, which is really cool. Um, and then in our front entry room, there is an interactive timeline, and this is a timeline that you can add to of special events, um, creative moments um, in your life. I've seen a lot of birthdays, which gotta be real, birthdays are probably the most creative time because that's when you arrive into the world and you start creating, which I think is really cool. Um, so today, for our, uh, for our narrative art, you will need a piece of paper. Um, I have a very large piece of paper, but you do not need a piece of paper this big. Um, you can have a, you know, a regular 8 by 10 paper, which is like about this folded in half almost. Actually, that'd be a little narrow, but it can be smaller. Um, you can even be using like a notepad. Um, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be very large. Um, and also a ruler or some sort of flat edge. You could potentially use a book um, that you have with you or something that's just flat um, and not sharp. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a line. Um, and this is especially good for our, our young learners who are learning all about shapes and lines. Oops. Okay. I've got a notepad here. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my ruler or my flat edge and I'm gonna take a pencil to start just in case I mess up. Notice this pencil does not have an eraser. And where does it come from? Oh, it comes from the National Galleries of Scotland. <laughs> Love that place. Shout out to National Galleries of Scotland. Um, they actually, I think there's an artwork there by one of our former artists and residents that uh, he painted while he was in California, which is really cool. Okay, so we started out with one line, right? Let's make a couple more lines. You can make as many lines as you want. 
Um, and I think what's really cool about this artwork is this is something that you can add to throughout the day. Ooh, now we're getting serious. It's like making art throughout the day. And I hope everyone can see me. Otherwise, future Holly might have to film this again <laughs> and post and share it another way. Okay. So everybody, I started with three lines today. Now what I think I might like to do, if you have a marker or crowns, I have a Sharpie. I'm just gonna go over my lines, just trace over it. Everybody knows what trace is, right? Trace is when you um, you go over something with a, uh, you're tracing over a design or a pattern using another tool, right? Like a Sharpie, like my, see? So with my pencil line, I just went right over it with the Sharpie. I'm gonna do two more. I swear I saw this on Mr. Rogers one time too. Okay. All right. So we've got three lines, right? Let's count them. One, two, three. And if it helps too, you can also number them. And actually it almost looks like I could have four if I wanted, right? Let's just put four there. So one, two, three, four. Okay, friends, so here's how we're going to tell our story today. You're going to start from when you woke up to now, essentially. Um, so let's see, what are some things that you do when you wake up? Maybe you stretch. What else? Oh, maybe you brush your teeth. Maybe you have breakfast first. Uh, if you live with animals like Teacher Holly does, maybe you need to feed them or take them for a walk. Maybe you listened to some music this morning. Maybe you did a whole exercise routine. Um, what else could we do? And maybe you watched a, you know, a favorite TV show or movie, right? So if we were to start just thinking about like, what did you do this morning? And if you're at home doing this with an adult or another family member or friend, you can turn to them and, and talk about what you did this morning. Whoops. Shh. <laughs> Actually, friends, while you're thinking about that, hold on one second. Sorry, friends. Teacher Holly forgot to um, sequester, put away teacher chubs. <laughs> okay. So we thought about what you were doing today. So uh, one of the things that I was thinking that I did this morning was I stretched. I always got to start the day with a good stretch. So. abstract looking because I decided to use shapes to draw myself today but maybe when I go in a little bit later and color I can add more detail but I've already started with sitting up in bed and taking a nice big stretch right okay and the next thing that I did I'm pretty sure I brushed my teeth first let's see how do I brushing brushing one's teeth can tell that I'm a little rusty when it comes to drawing. <laughs> but you know what, that's okay, because this is all about having fun. 
and exploring our creative process. So I'm not going to stress about it at all. At least I'm going to try not to. wish I like could remember what my toothbrush looked like. <laughs> oh, I forgot to give myself hair. Oh my goodness. Because when I woke up this morning, my hair was very wild. Still kind of wild. Okay, so the next thing I did, I brushed my teeth. I don't know why I don't look excited about it, but <laughs> brushing your teeth is it's actually one of the, um, uh, is, a, is a strange joy of mine, but I don't look particularly happy. <laughs> okay, what are some other things that I did? Oh, um, I got dressed. Can't forget about getting dressed, right? Um, and actually, the more you think about it, the more things that you do in your day, um, yeah, they all tell the story about how you got from here to there, right? Um, so, okay, I picked out my, my outfit, which is my, one of my favorites. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change things up a little bit, though, because sometimes you don't always need to put yourself in the narrative, in the story, to tell a good story. Um, sometimes you can have symbols that stand in for your story, um, like my jumpsuit. <laughs> Um, and I know I've been keeping to the line a little bit here, but I'm going to, I'm going to change it up a little bit and kind of freeform them. Okay, there. So I've got my, see what I did? I moved up a little bit and actually later I might go in and add a really cool pattern of some kind, an extra color, just like we saw in, um, in our story today with Jill and her dragon. Um, but you can see like. I just have my outfit that I chose today. I tore, chose to wear my blue coveralls and my Esmoa t-shirt, um, which is a very funky Esmoa t-shirt um, that one of my students designed many years ago. Um, so friends, I think I'm gonna keep working on this today. Um, and I hope you will too. Um, you could, I mean, you could, this could take you all day to do, which I really love. I love art that kind of fills my day um, and gives me kind of a way to, I don't know, process the time and have a fun story to share for later. And you know, you can always share your stories with us at, um, at Esmoa Org. Um, that's E-S-M-O-A-O-R-G across all our social media. You can use the hashtag play, P-L-A-Y, at A-T, Esmoa, E-S-M-O-A, play at Esmoa, or at um, Esmoa at Home, which is E-S-M-O-A, A-T, H-O-M-E. Um, and I think that's all the time we have today. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, remember for any of our adult friends that are here today, uh, Teacher Barbara is leading Just Draw on Fridays via Zoom um, from 10 a.m. To, um, to 11 a.m. I almost said 11 p.m. Wouldn't that be fun? Doing art all day and night, right? Um, and uh, yeah, um, we made some updates to the website. There's some virtual tours. Um, so you can actually visit Stardust today and see all that artwork that Teacher Holly was referencing and talking about. Um, and don't forget, Esmola also has our artist, um, our artist challenge. Um, you can share your art with us that way as well. Um, just hit that link in our bio. Um, and I look forward to seeing everybody next Wednesday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time um, for Play It Esmola.